So in this video I'm going to be using all this lot to sort out the wiring problems on my model railway in N-gauge. How hard is that going to be? So I need to sort out all the wiring on my layout. Uh, I've got lots of different types of wires uh, and lots of different types of connectors uh, and various gizmos and, and bits and bobs that I'm going to uh, wire in. And I thought I'd just uh, explain to you all the different things that I'm going to be using uh, and how they're going to fit together. And I expect uh, over the next few videos uh, I'll go into more detail about uh, all the particular uh, things that I need to do. So the first thing is that I need to take power uh, from my control unit, uh, my DCC controller, um, and that needs to go out to the track. And to do that, I need some wire. And so I've got these two reels here of uh, black and red wire. Uh, these run in pairs out to the track. Uh, and before they actually attach to the track, um, I connect them to a, a track dropper using some of these suitcase connectors. Um, now these are good because they allow me to uh, attach uh, a track dropper uh, to the wire sort of in the middle of its, its throw. You put, the, uh, you put the wire in there and then cramp it down with a pair of pliers um, and close it up. And so there are also other wires that uh, I use uh, for the actual track droppers. Um, they run from the individual rails where they're soldered onto the side, drop through the baseboard, and then they connect to these. Um, so these are, provide effectively a power bus that runs under the track. Um, uh, and then uh, each section of track, each piece of track that's connected uh, with a rail joiner also has its own droppers um, to connect to the power bus. So even if the rail joiners fail electrically, um, there should still be an electrical connection to every piece of track on the layout. Now, because I want to be able to automate my layout uh, and I want to be able to get the computer to know where the trains are and to drive the trains around the layout, uh, the, the track is divided into what's called blocks, uh, which are electrically isolated from each other. So in fact, there's not one bus that runs under the track, but there's a, a separate bus that runs to each of the blocks uh, on the layout. Now, all of those, uh, all of those, uh, now all of those uh, buses running to each of the blocks obviously need to join together somewhere, um, and so uh, at the moment. They are all joined together on some nasty, horrible solder tag that's a big mess. But I think I can do better than that. So I've gone and bought myself, bought myself this. These are some terminal blocks. Um, but the good thing is they can also come with these bus piles. So I can join each of these uh, terminals together. Uh, or I could possibly put a break in and have part, part black and part red. Um, and then I can put my feeds here into uh, the bottom. Uh, and that provides a much neater solution. It doesn't involve any soldering, uh, which is going to make it a lot easier to change in the future. So I can use those uh, for providing terminal blocks. But I also mentioned uh, that I was going to be doing block detection um, and automation. And in order to do, you do that, I'm going to be using some of these. Now, this is a unit from DigiKeys. This is a DR4088. Uh, and it, uh, they produce several different versions of this. Um, this one has a large letter CS on. So CS, Current Sensing Detection. Um, and what this can do uh, is it can detect when there is current flowing through a particular uh, section of track. Um, there'll be current flowing through a particular section of track because there's something on it drawing current. 
like the motor of a locomotive. Um, but it could also be something else like lighting in a coach. So it's a good way of detecting whether there's rolling stock in that block. Uh, and the way you use it is that you uh, run uh, the uh, connection, the, uh, the power bus connection uh, through this. This has got 16 different terminals uh, here across the top. Uh, so I can use it to detect uh, 16 different blocks. Um, and it can provide uh, its feedback over so in several different ways. Um, this one uh, has connections for a S82N bus. I don't really know what that is, to be honest. And I use a Digitrack system, uh, which uses the Loco, LocoNet bus. Um, but I've also got another one of these that has a LocoNet connection and an S88N connection, um, which means I can attach that to my LocoNet and I can then uh, attach more of these uh, via S88N uh, to that. It turns out the versions that use S88N are a lot cheaper than the versions that use LocoNet. Um, so I only need one LocoNet connection and I can save some money by using the others. Now, in order to connect these uh, together, uh, it turns out that the, uh, this came with a cable for connecting it to the next S88N uh, device. And that was this cable. And if I have a look carefully on uh, the writing actually on the cable, it tells me that this is a CAT5E cable, which is a sort of standard computer network cable. So I can get loads of these. Uh, I've got loads of these. Uh, they're cheap. Uh, in fact, I've even got a, a crimper so I can make some of these. Uh, and I've got some spare cable. So I'm going to have no problem uh, wiring these things up. In order to connect the LocoNet uh, devices together um, and connect uh, the LocoNet version of this to the LocoNet bus, I need LocoNet cables. Um, I've got a LocoNet cable here. Uh, this came with the, the uh, DigiTrack DigiKeys device. Um, but uh, you can also make these yourself. Um, this uses a ooh, was it, uh, 6P6C, possibly, uh, something like that. Anyway, it's, it's like a phone jack and it's got six connections. Um, this, this version has eight connections. I believe that's a RJ45 um, and I think this is called an RJ11. Um, in the UK or, and in America I think as well and various other places, um, telephones uh, can use a version of this with four connections uh, and sometimes telephones use these cables that have six connections. So these are reasonably standard. Uh, but I've also got myself a crimper um, so I can put these uh, these plugs on the end of cables. And I've gone and got myself this reel of cable. Um, this is a just a, a cable that has six uh, conductors in it. I think it's actually intended for uh, security alarms, but I can put uh, put these RJ11 um, plugs on the end of this cable and create my own LocoNet cables. So I'll be able to show you how to do that a little bit later on. So I've mentioned that my layout has two different boards um, and where they connect together, um, I'm also going to need to connect the wires together. And so to do that, I'm going to use these uh, chocolate box connectors. Um, you can screw a, a wire into one end uh, and another into the other and then they just push together. Um, and you can chop these off for how many connections uh, that you want. So I'm going to use that for the main bus connection between uh, the cables. And I suspect I'm also going to have uh, several other circuits. Um, I might have uh, a 5 volt circuit to power 5 volt devices. Um, I might have a 12 volt circuit to power 12 volt uh, devices. Um, so I'll be able to uh, have a single 
single connection, possibly with, with six or eight of these, uh, just to connect the two boards together. Now there's one more uh, item here that I haven't shown you, and that's this. Now this is another DR4088, um, but it's not the current sensing version. This is the Opto version. Um, it does the same thing as this one. It provides feedback about uh, 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 to provide detect occup occupancy detection. But instead of detecting whether there's current being drawn on a particular track, um, I can connect it to an optical device or several other different uh, types of detector um, in order to detect the presence of a train. Um, I've ordered myself some infrared uh, proximity detectors, which I should be able to use with this in order to detect when a train is in a particular spot, an exact position, rather than on a block of track. Uh, and I hope to be able to use that in order to get the trains to stop in exactly the right place when they pull into the staging yard. Um, this will connect uh, into the, uh, the S88N uh, bus, hopefully. Um, so that, that should all work. Um, but that does need its own, all the, the infrared proximity detectors, they'll need their own power supply. Um, uh, so next morning, uh, so the the lights have changed a bit, um, but there's a, there, there's another thing I wanted to show you. I mentioned uh, power for the optical detectors, um, so I'm also going to try and use this. Now this is just a leftover or power supply from an old computer that I've taken to bits, um, but it should still work. And uh, there's lots of wires that come out of it, um, and. Uh, I need to make a few modifications, uh, particularly around the uh, the power switch, uh, the wires that enable the power to, the, for this to turn on and off. But from all these wires, I should be able to get a 12 volt power supply, a 5 volt power supply, and also a, a, probably a three and a half volt power supply. Um, so all those those various supplies should uh, enable me to do things like put lighting on the layout. Um, it should be able to power those optical detectors. Um, and I expect the various other accessories and so on uh, that will need separate power and I'll be able to use this power supply uh, in order to drive all of those. Uh, so that'll be another little project. We'll be modifying this uh, so I can use that uh, to power things on the layout. I think that's probably going to wrap this video up. Um, uh, it's just a short one uh, this week, but I just wanted to show you all the different things uh, that I'm going to be doing. Uh, before I, I start making videos uh, on the details uh, of trying to use uh, each of these, these various things uh, in order to get my layout wired up, uh, get all the automation working and so on. If you haven't already, do go and subscribe um, and then you'll get, uh, you'll get told when I put a new video up. Normally it goes up on a Friday evening. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, do, uh, do put a comment uh, uh, down below um, if, uh, if there's anything more you'd like to know about what I'm doing, or perhaps perhaps you've seen some problems, or maybe you've used some of these things, particularly if you've used these DigiKeys uh, detectors and feedback devices, uh, put a comment and let me know, um, because I'm a bit anxious uh, about all the details of making that work. Okay, and I look forward to seeing you next time.